Okay, well, great. Well, thank you for everyone for coming. Five actors, so we're, we're, we're going to get started. Uh, and I will, in the background, try to figure out the caption thing. So today we're going to be talking about the Interactivity API. Um, and we have Michal um, Chaplinski here to talk us through it and give us a little example, and some demos and stuff, or a small demo. And uh, then we'll kind of open it up for general questions. Uh, so if you want to ask a question, you there should be a little hand raise. Um, button down on the bottom of Zoom, or you can paste it into chat. And I will uh, do my best to uh, make sure everyone everyone's questions get answered. And um, yeah, uh, just a couple of links to share. So here's a, a link to the, um, I'm just gonna drop it in chat here. So this is the link to the the make post that is that announces the, um, the API. And uh, there's also a link to the project repo if you're interested in getting involved. So Trying to click on it and it's not working. There we go. Uh, so a couple of links there. And uh, yeah, so like I said, uh, we have Miha um, Chaplinski here. So I'll get him to explain to us his background and his involvement with the API. And then we'll probably just hand it over to him for demos. So over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. So yeah, hi, I'm Michal. I work at Automatic and I'm part of the team that uh, has been involved in the development of the Interactivity API. And prior to that, so prior to working at Automatic, I worked at a small startup called Frontity, uh, which um, was working on a React framework for headless WordPress. So that's kind of my background. And uh, yeah, the company got uh, acquired by Automatic and uh, we've, we've stopped working on the framework and kind of diverted our efforts into trying to bring the same kind of developer experience uh, that you would have with Frontity uh, back into WordPress. So the Interactivity API is kind of the first step towards that, uh, that vision. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I'm, by the way, I'm from Poland and I live in Peru. So yeah, just a fun fact about me. All right. Um, should I go, just go ahead with yep, the sure. demo? Yep, right? Sorry. Yeah. yeah just, all right. uh, just dive in and uh, I'll, uh, I'll track the questions as we go. And then we'll, after your sort of the formal demo sections done, we can kind of start asking you the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, okay, let me share my screen and all right. So um, yeah, as part of the proposal for the Interactivity API, we've created a demo site uh, for uh, different kinds of movies. And with the Interactivity API, you uh, can get this um, kind of user experience that you are typically accustomed to from single page applications like when you like a particular movie, the number of likes are synchronized with this other uh, movie likes block over here in the header. Um, and you can navigate to ind an individual movie page uh, and you can see the likes are still visible here. So you can uh, take notice that this movie has been liked. The likes are preserved in the header. You can even play the trailer and you can navigate to let's say individual actor page you can go you can go back to the to the movies page and uh yeah it all just keeps working and the uh like the movie trailer keeps playing and the uh yeah the, na the navigations are instant and yeah you can even search for for movies so let's say you search for like avatar oh, oh it's not there actually okay let's search for I don't know, Marvel, no Marvel movies. Okay. Superman, no, Spider-Man. All right. So <laughs> as you see, the, uh, the search is instant and, uh, it's all built with, with just WordPress and interactivity API. Um, so let me show you how it interacts with integrate, sorry, with the block editor, uh, for instance, this is the search template of the uh, in our WordPress site of uh, in this theme. And if I edit, for example, uh, let's say post template, yeah, I can add here maybe uh, 
like 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 this movie and and maybe let's put it in a yeah let's group it actually and let's add another block here and let's add the uh, movie icon well this should maybe be a row instead of a group can we oh the zoom is zoom controls are uh Ah, covering it up for me. So no, convert to I can convert to a row. Yeah, it, it actually it doesn't matter. So it will be the, the layout is not perfect, but it's uh, just to show the principle that you can uh you can edit the search template. And now if I go back to my uh to my site, I can actually search for uh, it's again, okay, I don't know, even without reloading the page. I can search for Schindler's list and I can already see the updated blocks show up here because the content for this uh for this search is just the HTML that uh is part of the search template. Uh so yeah, this is a this is basically like a teaser of the functionality that we that we want to bring into WordPress and uh yeah I'd be very happy to hear people's questions and concerns and uh yeah any ideas I will, so, I will stop sharing yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, if anyone has has questions, just go ahead and unmute and ask them. Or if you're more comfortable dropping them in chat, I can facilitate that. Or um, I don't know if anyone has their hand raised. I don't see anybody hand raised. So if so yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to get much more technical than than this. By the way, uh, just depending on people's appetites. Yeah, I'll just uh, go ahead and ask, like. Uh, just say that like button. Like, how much? Like, uh, like, what is the what is the code for something like that look like? What what are we expected to do as developers to build that functionality? Uh, -huh. uh sure. Yeah, I can. I in fact I have it open up. Uh, I can just show it. I can share my screen and show you. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. It's. Uh, give me one sec. All right, so this is the repo for the very uh, same demo that you have just seen. And by the way, this code is all on, uh, up on GitHub uh, as well. So you can take a look uh, there. I don't know if Ryan has dropped the link in the chat, perhaps. Yeah, it should be in chat there. I, I can drop it again, though. If, uh, OK, yeah, perfect. If, uh, that's helpful. Uh, so there, there are a few pieces. So of course, you will first need the uh, the interactivity API runtime. Uh, at the moment, it's distributed as a plugin, but we are we are going to well, we are <laughs> aiming to merge it into Gutenberg at some point. So there's there is no definite date. There's no definite timeline yet. Uh, at the moment, yeah, you can just install it as a plugin and use it to build your blocks, your interactive blocks. For the interactive blocks, you'll need a couple things. So First off, you will need block JSON and add interactivity true in order to opt in for your block to be an interactive block. All right. And then you will want to, well, you also want the view script. This has been uh, part of WordPress for, for a couple of releases now. And you can add your view and render files to. Um, so yeah, let me start perhaps with the render file. So the the render PHP file is the file that um, is used to render the uh, like the front end content of your block. Um, and in here you'll see uh, there are a couple things that you might not be used to. So for example, this WP store. Uh, yeah. This is yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. What is the uh, WP store on PHP side? 
Uh, yeah, on PHP side, this I believe is not mentioned in the proposal itself. This is a way to create initial state uh, in on the PHP side on the server, so that you can you can preload your uh, your store on on the JS side, right? On the client side, you can preload it with some initial values from the server. So you could, for example, do something like uh, let's say not selector, but maybe like state. Yeah, let's go with that. And yeah, you could have, you could pass, a, you know, you could maybe like translate the movie title here. So, and you could use the, oh, this is not, okay, let's say like, it's not liked movies, but maybe, oh yeah, okay, let's make it array. Uh, and then I don't know one is some I don't know some movie title. Yeah. I mean it's a it's a dumb example, but uh, just illustrates the idea that you can you can do some pre-processing of your state on the server. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah. Um yeah, and then your PH render PHP value that the uh your directives like the data WP context, which will uh, in our case, let me perhaps remove this so we don't get confused. Uh so in the context we'll store the ID of the movie, and then on a click you'll uh like you add it yeah you you call this action which is defined in the view file and this will add this current movie to the uh to the array of liked movies does that make sense the yeah. is yeah this is a great example oh and it's simple to follow so that's what i was uh you know concerned about a bit how you know how complex this is, but it seems pretty straightforward, at least in this example. Okay, yeah, that's, I'm I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, there's a bit of a in your in your PHP file. There's a bit of a PHP HTML and like JSON, like all in one line of code. So that's a a bit odd yeah. to see. Yes. So this actually. There, so yeah, uh, it, it's yeah, it's a known concern. So <laughs> let me put it this way. Uh, I think there's already an issue on GitHub. I don't recall who has started working on this to uh, create some helpers specifically for um, like passing serialized uh, data to the context so that you, you don't have to do like three different languages on one line, uh, which is yeah. a bit unwieldy. Yeah, yeah, I could I definitely see folks getting like tripped up on that a bit. Um, but outside of that, it looks pretty straightforward. There's a couple of follow-up questions in the chat that I'll just uh, jump in now before we lose them. But um, Weston Ruder is asking, uh, how is state persisted? Uh, like the liked movie state, for example, is that uh -huh. just not currently wired into the user meta, for example? Uh, yeah, so currently in the demo, no, it's not persisted in any way. So you could... Uh, I guess you could do it just like you could do um, you could do whatever you want <laughs> let me say that like it like this so uh the state that you you have in your store you can store it in local storage you can uh you can um, but it would be feasible it. for example in your actions to hit the rest api to save that liked option to a to user meta like but that uh, is that right Part of the current API now. I think Weston, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's kind of where you're going with this. Is is there a a mechanism in place now? Yeah. So uh, at, at the moment, the there is no mechanism for it. So there is no way uh, 
that's built in into the interactivity API to persist it from the client to the server. Uh, but yeah, it's something that we're we're very much aware of that okay. that uh, people will want to do uh, in the future. And cool. yeah, so we have we've been thinking about it a little bit, and but it's not we haven't decided yet if we will do it via the REST API uh, or um, by by um, for example. Yeah, there is, so I can say this, there is one example that yeah, I could maybe show super briefly. Um, we have been working on a, on, a, on a very, very early experiment of a comments form that uses interactivity API and it shows the comments and reloads the comments. Uh, uh, just, uh, Michal, can you just yeah? zoom in a little bit? Can you just make your, your font size a little bigger? There's just been a- Oh yeah, like, absolutely. A request in there. Um, is, that, is that good? I think so. Good. I mean, that's good for me, but uh, M um, re requested it, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just. Uh, that's okay. I'll just bring up this example. Uh, GitHub. Oh. And in comment form. Yeah. So. Uh, we've worked on an, on an example where a, the comment form can submit comments back to the server and then uh, using a post request and then get that content, uh, not get that content, I basically um, grab that like content that's received uh, back from the response and then diff the page and put the comment in the right place on the page. So uh, I think the interesting code will be here in the index PHP, perhaps. Uh, let me... No, block JSON in the Vue.js perhaps. Uh, so I don't know if... Uh, if like everybody can see this with the, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger if that was the request, but um, there isn't a lot to it. So it's basically uh, one action which grabs the form data. Obviously it's, a, it's still, you know, an experiment and a toy example. It posts it to WP comments uh and then gets the response and uh, it will it will diff the dom and then do a, a client side navigation so just skipping over a lot of details here um the just want to note that this type of interaction in this case it has to be also integrated with client side routing which is what this navigate function does um so yeah we this is something basically too it was a long answer to a, a question which uh to which i can just say yes it's something that we are thinking of but it's not the current focus let's say so we want to make sure that the api is solid as it is without first without the uh server side persistence and we will we will add it in the future but it is currently like we you can install this as you're doing now, and this would you you could roll your own uh, solution for persistence at this point, right? Uh, yeah. So you could, uh, yeah, you you could do something like what is done here in this example. Yes. Uh, but of course, with all the caveats that yeah, the API is still very experimental. Oh, for sure, it's, for sure. And yeah, <laughs> all of it can break at any point. Um. Related to that original question, there's another question about um, cache logic that's part of the a API. I assume um, mm -hmm. well, the, the question is related to, to, to the question above, which was the question about uh, state persistence. 
is there any cache logic that is part of the API? I mean, something searching, I mean like something searching for the same movie more than one time before refreshing the page. Okay, so uh, I wonder what uh, caching at what level the person had in mind. I, so if my I... guess, just having read that, my guess would be to uh, like similar to how if you hit a data store now, you hit it the first time and then the second time, like if, if I do like a get ed, ed, entity records for posts, I get the 10 most recent ones and it doesn't hit the server right. every time I, I recall that. That's my guess. The, the, this question is from... Renato De Carli, if I'm uh, De Carli Rosa. So if there's a follow-up stuff in there, or if I'm if I'm making assumptions, I shouldn't. Please let me know. But um, right, I guess, right. is yeah, there a I caching layer of any yes. form at this point? Yes, yes. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, in fact, the pages are in the demo. Um, it's using client-side navigations and the HTML pages for the individual movies, for instance. They are both prefetched and cached locally. So this is whoop, no. Uh, so yeah. So this is why you can navigate instantly to to an individual movie page. So uh, the way it's the demo is configured in a way that uh, the links in the viewport, all the links in the viewport will get prefetched. Um, it's it's also something that we want to make configurable so that um, you could if you opt into having client side transitions uh, sorry client side navigations then you, uh, you can uh, prefetch for example all the links you can prefetch all, only the links on hover you can maybe only prefetch them uh when uh with the intersection observer um stuff like that and so this is the the part where the cache gets populated and the Indeed, yeah, the the pages are being cached uh, for for the subsequent navigations. Uh, there's a question in the chat about what about the store? Does that does it get cached? Does the store get cached? Um, mm -hmm. Could what which part of the store would you? Well, I'm not quite well, sure what caching in this context would mean. Well, I guess, right. So we have the that PHP file that populates the initial store, which renders your HTML. I guess, does the mm -hmm. client side store get cached too? Is that dy dynamically generated like when it loads? What's that interaction look like? And I don't know if that helps clarify. Uh, do you, do, <laughs> so the store is, so the store is, populated with the data from from the server side so the okay so this store right it will if there exists a wp store by the way the just noting that this this naming is uh is not final so it's not <laughs> it might be wp store it's likely to be something else in a, in the uh, future version of the api it it will populate uh the data for the store on the client side. And this store is not, so like if you if you reload, like if I reload this tab, for example, like there is no, this this, this state gets blown away. So you'll see that the, there are no likes anymore. Okay. So the state is not, it's not preserved. It's, however, if you, um, If you do so, what I was showing, perhaps this is what the person meant by the by this question. Uh, so if I, whoops, yeah, if I click on a bunch of movies and I, I like a few movies and then I do a navigation, navigation back. So the store, the store is preserved across the client side navigations, um, because we are doing. Perhaps I should explain a little bit what I mean by client side navigations and how they like how they are used in the API, because this is perhaps the source of confusion. Sure. So, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The the navigations that, that are happening right now, they are like a single page. They are like navigations in a single page application. So the 
there is no reloading of the whole page. It's just that the HTML for those for those pages has been uh, prefetched and it's cached, and the the interactivity API diffs the page and in a in a way um, I could say similar sort of conceptually to how React um, React Server components work. Uh, without going too deeply into technical details now. Uh, and then diffs the page and then uh, uh, patches it with the HTML from this new page. Uh, so for this reason, yes, the store is, I wouldn't say cached, but this, the store is preserved across the navigations because they are navigations in JavaScript. So all the JS state is preserved on the page. I hope this made sense. I can try we, to clarify. We, we got a thumbs up. I I think I think the I yeah, that makes sense, I think. Um in the sense of uh it's it's cached in the sense of a, it's a big JavaScript object that's running in the uh -huh. browser. Um but beyond that, um there's not there's because there's not really a persistence no. portion that's so, been sort of ironed out, yeah. there would be no way to cache that on the server side. No, yet. so I could yes. By the way, so I could. There's one thing I could show. So in the the inter the, the interactivity plugin, there it has just one setting, which is client side navigation. So if I turn it off and save, and uh, I go back to to the page. Oops, I. Uh, yeah, if I reload the page, and then let's say I like, I like some movies. Great. The, I'm still on the same page, so the likes show up and they're synchronized. But if I now navigate to a new page, the state gets blown away because the I've disabled the client side navigations. So this is just doing a normal, regular uh, page reload. The so the interactive blocks keep working, but we don't have the the client side navigation. We don't have the we, we don't have preserve the JS state. Right. Yeah, I hope, I hope this helped clarify it a little bit. Um, yeah, I have a couple. I have some pre some pre uh, makes sense to me from Richard Aber. Uh, so one question. So the, I have just a, a sort of a list of questions that we can ask, and maybe we we can rapid fire them through through them if if you'd like. Um, yeah. <laughs> one, one question is, how can I learn more about this? Where where can we where can we get more info on this and follow? Sure. Up? Yeah. Uh, so the obviously the proposal itself. Uh, I think there were a lot of great comments there as well. Uh, we we've tried to put uh, some effort into the FAQ at the end of the. A proposal as well um, to to sort of preempt questions that people might have about it, and then there uh, we are actively working on the API on GitHub. Um, so there is a repository that um, I I guess you have posted a link to. Yep, perhaps. I'll uh, yes. I'm dropping yeah, that in the chat one. right now. Yep. Um, Yeah, as well as uh, if you want to look at just examples of how this particular demo has been built, there is also a separate repository uh, for that. Um, and yeah, the you can find us uh, also obviously on the WordPress Slack to hit us up with any questions uh, that you might have about it. Uh, cool. So there's a so there is so, we're, so under the hood there's some preact use um, going on here. So the, the the question is why did you use preact over react as mm -hmm. in the editor? Right. Yeah. Uh, so there are there are a few reasons for using preact over react for us. Um, so first one just right off the bat is the the size. So preact is about 
uh, if I remember correctly, five kilobytes or so. Um, and React is, uh, well, it's, it's significantly more. I don't remember the exact number. React plus React DOM is about 50 kilobytes, maybe. I, I, I might be misremembering it, but it's significantly more. So it gives us, uh, you know, a lot more budget to, uh, for the JavaScript of the uh, of the website to you know to fill, um, and secondly, the Preact is very extensible and it has something called Preact uh, hooks. So not to not to be not to confuse it with the the hooks um, in the same way that React has hooks. So Preact has a in fact, I think they're called, sorry, I think they're called option hooks. Yeah, I should be clear, be clear about it. So it's a way to extend Preact itself, which is something that React does not have. And this is what we were able to use to, uh, to create the directives uh, layer on top of Preact. Um, and uh, this is what we're also, we're like, we're able to use to, um, to create these uh, client side navigations uh, feature as well, and uh, yeah, the React also has so it's compatible with React uh, through a Preact Compat package. So in case we ever want to reuse the same code across the block editor and the front end, there is sort of a pathway towards that, uh, and. Yeah, the so Preact is very performant. Pre, it's also uh, there, there are a number of reasons. <laughs> it's performant, and it also uh, it's uh, it's more HTML friendly than React. So uh, pre so Preact is, uh, for instance, uh, let, me, let me phrase it this way. So React has some incompatibilities, for example, with web components. Uh, which Preact does not suffer from. So there are a lot of small, medium reasons that kind of all together pointed towards Preact for us. Great. And uh, the follow-up question to that is, does this mean Gutenberg will move from React to Preact, the, the project Gutenberg? Right. Uh, no. I think at least in the short to medium term, there, there are no plans to do that. Uh, uh, so I'm. I think there would be, and in fact, I I don't believe there would be any benefit to that really for the block editor. Uh, so what the reasons that we are concerned with for uh, in choosing Preact for the front end, they they're not they don't re really uh, they're not the same for the block editor. So. Uh, while the like the bundle size is important, of course, for the block editor, it's much it's less of a concern for sorry, the bundle size is a concern for the front end. It's a bit less of a concern for the block editor because it's only you know it's only just loaded once. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we have no plans to to switch to that. Okay. Um, great answer. Um, I'm if anyone else has questions, uh, feel free to drop them in. I, I'm just going to keep going here. But uh, um, do I need to migrate all of my all of my blocks to use the Interactivity API? Uh, right. No. <laughs> so ye, the the thing with the Interactivity API is that it will work alongside any uh, any other blocks using any other system, vanilla JS, jQuery, whatever. Um, so you don't have to migrate all of your current blocks to it. Um, there, there are some benefits though to to having your uh, all the blocks on your site use the interactivity API if if that's a possibility. So, for instance, the client side navigations that I've been uh, talking about before that I that I've mentioned. Uh, which allow you these kind of seamless page transitions, those uh, will will only work if all of the blocks, uh, all the interactive blocks, opt into using the interactivity API. So there is 
uh, yeah, if if you you have other blocks that are using other interactivity mechanisms, there is a there's a likelihood that they might break with using the client side navigations. So for this reason, uh, they should all, if you want to 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 have this uh, the, 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 the these page transitions uh, as a user experience on your site, all the blocks should use the interactivity API. Cool. Um, next question is, can I use directives in the block editor? And I think maybe, I don't know, I, if, for those who haven't read the proposal and stuff, maybe can you explain what a directive is and then whether or not mm -hmm. we, can, we can use it in, in the block editor? Right, right. So uh, yeah, the directive is, uh, the directive is uh, any of the those special attributes that starts with data WP, uh, for example, data WP on, data WP class, data WP context. Those are those are the directives in our uh, system. And e you currently, um, they're not designed for the block editor at the moment. Uh, we are thinking of ways that this could happen in the future, but at the moment, you you shouldn't use them in the block editor. So that's kind of a brief answer to that. Right. Okay. Um, um, did, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. No. No. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a question uh, coming in from chat. PHP actions and filters while loading a new page through the API on the front end are already mm -hmm. totally solved? Question mark. Or are there challenges to solve there yet? I think this question has to do with the uh, client side navigation and making sure that all those hooks and filters that we, right. we know and love are, are actually being fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, PHP actions and hooks uh, indeed are you can say solved. <laughs> uh, so what that means is that I think this person is referring to the problem, which uh, which happens if you. Um, have a, any sort of JavaScript framework uh, doing the the rendering or hydration on the client side, and then you have some PHP actions and hooks that can change the uh, the server side markup. So in this case, you'd end up with an with markup on the client side that that's generated, let's say, by React that is different from the markup that's generated by the server because the PHP actions and hooks, they only run on the server, they can't run on the client. Uh, but in this system, uh, using directives, uh, the all the HTML, so the all the um, content, uh, the directives, they are they're generated on the server side. So the there is no hydration per se happening in the same way that it, it there is with uh uh like let's say with just react so the any html that you you will modify with uh with your actions and uh and, and filters uh it will still uh, exist on the client side so you don't have to worry about it that's awesome. That's such a great question. Thank you for asking that one. Um, very cool. All right. Um, oh, how, okay. The next question, how can I preview the interactivity in the editor? Uh, yeah, so the, I think, uh, yeah, you mean, how would you, okay. How, how would you preview it in the editor? There, uh, the editor, side of your interactive blocks is uh, basically up to you at this point. Um, so yeah, you um, so yeah, like I was like I mentioned before, that we are thinking of ways that you could use the interactivity API in the editor. Mm -hmm. um, but and and there is there's some potential for it, but for now they're not designed for the editor. So you have to 
your edit JS files, they have to be, so this is for example, right, the movies demo, the uh the edit JS file of this this movie like button or movie like icon. Uh yeah, it's just a just a static emoji. So you don't you can't see, really see the interaction in the editor just yet. But you could, for example, add like you could create that now. Like it is possible so, now with, with custom blocks to be to to sort of fake the front end experience, uh, but it's not part of the API currently. Does that make sense? Uh, what, what I'm saying. So it makes sense. You could fake it in a sense that, like, you could re redo. You could do the same interactions uh, just using React here on the in the editor side and use React blocks uh, to let's say like do some use state here uh, and then pass I guess like an on here like pass an I don't know on uh on click right mm -hmm. uh so you could sort of fake it on the editor side but uh it, there is currently not a way to to uh pre like uh like it was phrased preview the interactions on the editor side um but yeah it is something that we are we're, th we're thinking about and we we will work on awesome uh, next question is, do I need to know React, PHP, and this new interactivity API? Uh, do, I need to, do I need to know PHP, React? And this new and, interactivity and this API. New interactivity API. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so you don't... Well, you, you do have need to know PHP and React in order to create custom blocks already. Uh, I would say at least custom dynamic blocks. Um, so, you if you want to add interactivity to your blocks using the interactivity API, yeah, you will you will um, at least need to understand how to add directives to your uh, uh, to your PHP files. But I hope that the API is very straightforward and uh it's it's just adding attributes to uh to html generated by php and uh and adding a bit of state in your state and actions in your view js files uh this covers i think a large portion of what what people want to do and in fact you don't have to so if you just want to add the interactivity on the front end you don't have to write any react or preact uh, unless unless you are writing custom directives. So if you only use the built-in directives like the data WP on click, data WP on class, context, um, you do not have to actually write any uh, components. React or okay. preact. That's good. Um... Like, uh, can I ask how many... Uh... <sighs> directives are part of the uh default package uh yeah good question i so it's about i want to say a dozen so it's uh <laughs> i can if i go to github i can tell you exactly uh so i think there are or actually if i uh, I think in the proposal that we do already mention all of them actually. If I scroll down there. Uh da, 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 da. yeah, there is, yes. Um so the yeah, these are all the directives that we um we want to have in the uh, runtime eventually. Not so just I just want to be clear that not all of them are implemented yet. So the, for instance, WP error is not implemented yet in the uh, in the runtime. Uh, I think uh, WP. Uh, I think all the other ones are no. Yeah, the salt and fill ones one is not either. For instance, and uh, yeah, it's very likely that in the if there is like an initial version of the uh interactivity api as let's say part of gutenberg that 
it will initially be a smaller a subset of those directives. Yeah. And to follow up, you mentioned uh, like writing custom directives. How, uh, what is that? What do you have any examples of that? Uh, like that you can share? Yeah. Uh, ah, good, good question. Uh, let me think too. I don't have an example handy, I think. And um, uh, let me see if there was an example here in the Delive Movies demo, I think. Uh, tabs in the video player, was there one? Uh, uh, let me see there. No, I think not. Uh, but yeah, I could. Uh, yeah, I could show you. So let me let me show you how a directive is implemented in. Uh, in the runtime so that you can kind of get a feeling for they are implemented in the very same way that you would extend the um, that you would add them in your code. So if you go to, for instance, directives, uh, this is, oh no, sorry, here, runtime, uh, directives. Um, can I maybe close this? Yeah. So for example, uh, let's take something simple like, uh, uh, Maybe, yeah, on. So, uh, yeah, by cre creating a directive is a matter of calling the directive function. So this is like a um, like a generator. I don't know what to call it for directives. Uh, the name for your directive. And the second argument is basically it's a, uh, actually a preact component okay. so this whole thing is actually a preact component and it might sound a bit weird but uh it's actually very it's a very powerful way to express uh custom directives yeah uh well thanks for it, yeah sharing that too because uh yeah, I just wanted to have an, a visual idea of what we, you know, I'm just thinking through ideas like what mm -hmm. what can I build with this, you know, and how would I do it? Um, so uh, thanks for just sharing that part of the code. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got caught up in the code there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a question for you. It's on our list, but I'm going to jump over to it. So I, I write a lot of blocks. Uh, and what is the benefit of using this API over what I'm doing now? So for the example of like the blocks that have the the heart block, the sort of the like block, like I have a Vue.js script where mm -hmm. I have my whatever JavaScript in there doing whatever. What's the benefit of migrating my existing block over to that? Or why should I go with this instead of just doing what I've been yeah. doing up until now? Yeah, so that's a <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a very good question. Uh, so I would say that the benefit number one is uh, standardization. So you uh, you're opting into a system that we hope will become standard for uh, all WordPress blocks. So what that implies is then that, for example, the different blocks when they use the same system for interactivity, they can communicate with each other. So you can have a, a gallery block talking to a drop down block, talking to another block, and they use they all use the same uh, basically the same store and actions for uh, talking to each other. So they there is there are no, you know, incompatible uh you know black boxes that uh that blocks are currently that they you know they they can't uh understand what's happening in another block so that's i think that's one big benefit um having 
yeah, I think having the interactivity API also um, also is a benefit. For instance, uh, with the client side navigations that we uh, that we showed off in the demo, um, it's it's not something that you can just bolt onto your uh, like your page built with uh, just vanilla JavaScript and or, or jQuery or um, just some other um, any other JavaScript solution. You it's something that you want. You have to kind of take into account uh, as you design your whole page. Like if I if I can phrase it this way. So with the interactivity API, it's designed to work with client side navigations from the get go. So you if if your blocks all use it, then you get that benefit from just by using it. You can you can get these smooth uh, page transitions. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I hope that it's if if the alternative is using uh, is using React just React to render your blocks or just use um, uh, just use vanilla JavaScript. I think there are advantages to either one, like above either one of those solutions. So if you just use React, then you can't server side render your blocks, right? Because React, you can't run a Node.js server with WordPress. If you're just using JavaScript, then that's great. But then you are always reinventing the wheel for, uh, for, for you know, for every. You you have to add a custom solution for every little thing that you that you want to add to your block, and you'd probably be better off using a standard like uh, like we are proposing. Um, so yeah, I hope. <laughs> yep, that, that's that's uh, a great that's, answer. <laughs> yeah, I hope that answers <laughs> that's a great it. answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple of questions in chat, and I just wanted to get this one out of my head. So, but so feel free to answer it later. But um. Is, is there a single store across the entire uh, front end or can different, because we're all, you're calling store in every yeah. block. Uh, what if I had, like, if I, what if I wrote a block and Justin wrote, wrote a block and I installed that on both my pages, would the, would the store be the same or would there be multiple stores per block? Like yeah, good question. Yeah. Yes. So there, uh, there is, there will be one store. The stores get merged on the client side. So this is uh, perhaps this was not the most um, like clear feature, uh, and maybe it wasn't clear why the stores are structured this way. Uh, so they have the the store function has selectors actions, and then they have this, I guess, a namespace, what you could call it, and then the name of your action. The reason for it is is uh, precisely that that the stores are merged on the client side, and if you have multiple blocks using the store, then you want to sort of, uh, you, you want to avoid uh, name clashes. You want to avoid, uh, hmm. yeah, your, your stores okay. getting overwritten. Oh, that's a, that's a great answer. Sorry. I'm not trying to rush you. We have one more minute and there's still three more questions in chat that I definitely oh. want to get to. Um, sure. Larry is asking as a beginner with API, can you please mention the tools that I'm required to install for learning? API testing. I'm assuming Larry's referring to the inter interactivity API. Maybe just give us a Cole's notes of what you're going to need to get started. And uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so if you'd, I assume that you want to use it on your site to write interactive blocks with it. Is that, that correct? Would be, that would be my assumption as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you would need the the interactivity API plugin. So you could get it, for example, from uh, it's not currently in the uh, in the WordPress uh, the plugin repository, but you can just get it from the releases page, which I can't see right now. Um, wait, yeah, okay, that's because I had zoomed. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, you can just get it from the releases page, and you um, you can just start writing your blocks, uh, your interactive blocks with it. I would um advice perhaps or i would suggest to look at the code of the wp movies demo to look at 
uh, the blocks there and how they are uh, organized and uh, the bits and pieces that you need. So the Vue.js file, the render.js file, uh, um, and what to include in the block JSON, for instance. Um, uh, okay, looks like um, Larry is asking for more generic uh, stuff. Larry, um, go ahead and ping me after the after this, and I, I'd be happy to help you out with that. Um, I just want to keep the questions specific to uh, to the interactivity API, but I'm more than happy to talk to you about this after. Um, Anton also has a question which is related to why should I use this? Uh, are there significant gains or trade-offs between this and something like Alpine JS? That is directive based as well for in interactivity. Okay. Yes. Yes. So that's a, yeah. Again, a good question. And yeah, that's probably a bit of a longer answer. I'll try to make it as short as possible. Um, yeah, Alpine is a, is a great framework. It was definitely an inspiration for the interactivity API. Uh, with Alpine, though, the you Alpine is not compatible with uh, with server side rendering of the directives for instance so um yeah i we i don't want to get yeah if we only have a few more minutes i don't want to get into all the details i believe that we do specify it in the proposal it might be a bit uh you might have to search for it in the in the body of the text um the other advantage over uh just alpine is that um um yeah, with so uh, we we chose basically. Let me let me put it this way. So um, we chose it the API to be built a top on top of Preact rather than just using Alpine, which to me comes with uh, with a, more benefits, like Preact having a bigger community than Alpine, uh, which is just maintained. As far as I understand, is just maintained by one person, and. Preact with Preact, you get a better syntax for creating custom uh, directives. So, like I was mentioning, I was showing it before. Um, no, this is not it. Uh, I think it was on GitHub, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, um, to make it brief, so to make create custom directives, the custom directives are basically just Preact components, which I think is a much more elegant primitive for creating uh, those custom directives than uh, than um, the the Alpine uh, way. Um, so, yeah, I think all those reasons. <laughs> I I think to me speak that speak to Preact being a better Preact and the interactivity API that's being built on top of it as a better option. Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so we're about four minutes over. Um, if anyone else has any other questions um, that they'd like to, well, th there's a couple more questions. Uh, I'll just kind of like throw them out, out again. We can stay a little bit longer if 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 people yeah, want that's to. Cool. Um, uh, as long as you have time. Sorry, I'm just I'm just assuming yeah, that's you fine. have nothing to that's time today. Fine by me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a question: Is this going to be a plugin or will it be part of core? Right. It. Our goal is to merge into Gutenberg and then eventually make it part of core, yes. Uh, at the moment, yeah, we do distribute it as a separate plugin, but it, it was from the beginning our goal to uh, make it into Gutenberg and core. Um, what happens with naming conflicts? Uh, I can imagine plugins, same toggle, actions.toggle, for example. Mm -hmm. um, right. How does the API handle that? Yeah, so this was uh, the reason for us to uh, introduce this namespacing in the stores. Uh, so um, this this is it's not let's say I think it's not a hard requirement in a sense that it's it's I think it's not enforced by the framework at this point, but we might make it so in the future uh, that. In your store, you have uh, selectors, actions, effects, um, uh, and state, and then a namespace, and then either the name of your action, uh, state, or whatever, or some other, maybe even more deeply nested object. So this is uh, 
simple way to avoid the conflicts. Just a quick follow up on that. Um, mm -hmm. So let's say that I like I keep using Justin as an example because he's right there in, in my viewport. But if I had a store and I use WP movies, I had a store selectors mm -hmm. WP movies and then a, a thing called uh, save. How how would it handle like if I did use the same namespace, how would it handle conflicts or what's uh, the plan? Maybe for you, you probably have, haven't hit that edge case yet, but. Um, and if that right. is an edge, edge case, I'll just shut up and we can move on. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> so just wondering, like, would... what's the plan there? Yeah, uh, so it would get um, it would get overwritten by the contents of one or the other block, uh, basically. Okay. And so it's yeah, there. I, I think yeah, it's it's exactly an edge case. So there's no uh, we are we're. At the moment, yeah, we're banking on people uh, using the namespaces for avoiding conflicts for this reason. And it's not, uh, I mean, I think it's not unlike uh, the name block naming um, um, scheme or pattern at, at the moment. So you you are encouraged to also uh, like name your block with something like this, right? So that there's no... So there's no confusion between the block names, right? So it should be dubbed something, some namespace slash your block name. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, I think that's it for all of my sort of pre uh, pre bait questions here. Uh, I guess I guess we can wrap it up unless I, I don't see anything else coming in in chat and I don't see anyone with their hand raised. So let me just say, Miha, thank you for taking us through this and. For letting oh, thank you, you for, for letting me. me subject you to all of these questions. <laughs> um, if you want to reach out to um, me, you can on uh, uh, WordPress Slack. I'm Welcher, or I'm Ry at Ryan Welcher on on Twitter. Uh, you're ha happy to do that, and I can and help try to help answer answer questions. Mihal, if you're are you on Slack? You know, would you prefer people reach out to me and I can reach out to you, or how would you like to uh, uh, to do that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm very happy to answer questions directly as well. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's cool. What, what's your um? What is your past? Uh, yeah, my, maybe just my drop your Slack, Slack my handle. Twitter. Yeah, whatever Slack you're comfortable handle. with. If you, uh, if you don't mind, yeah. I completely put you on the spot. So sorry for that. Yeah, no, no, no problem. And your I home just... phone number, your mailing address, and all that stuff, right? So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to remember if it's, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Because I have a different one. Uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, that's my, that's my handle. Um... Great. You should have. Uh... Uh, so, this should be the link to get into the chat. I mean, oh, thank you, Weston, for doing that. Um, Awesome. Well, uh, just a couple of sort of like housekeeping things. Uh, I just want to uh, mention that the uh, developer blog um, at developer.wordpress.org slash news is now out of beta and it's live. Go read all the awesome stuff that Justin does there. <laughs> um, 6.2 is out. So if you haven't updated, go ahead and update. Uh, the development of 6.3 is, is in the planning stage right now. Uh, I'll drop a link here for sort of for the 6.3 um, development cycle stuff. Uh, a couple of WordCamps coming out. WordCamp Europe is eight, uh, June 8th to 10th. Uh, WordCamp US is August 24th to 26th. And there's lots of local WordCamp stuff being scheduled. Um, I'll just put links in here. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, but thank you for coming. And Miha, thank you for uh, taking us through this. And like I said, if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to me and I can uh, wrangle them or however we want to do this. But uh, Otherwise, I think we can call it a meeting. So thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> great hosting from you. And uh, yeah, I was very happy to be here and answer all your questions. And yeah, peace. Uh, 
feel free to reach out to me as well directly if you have any questions about the interactivity API. And yeah, I'd be very happy to hear your, your questions and your feedback. Great. Okay. Well, I'm going to end the meeting, but thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm going to be putting the, the recording up on um, WordPress TV as soon as it's sort of ready to go. So thanks a lot, everyone. Talk to you all soon.